Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Tick Podcast number three. And uh, yeah, it is a late start. It is 1221 right now. Usually I get these recorded in the morning, but I'm feeling just super uh, laid back, kind of waking up, getting my day late and uh, all that jazz. So um, there's a couple of things that I thought I would kind of mosey around talk about um i uh want to start off by warning people when you make coffee use protection because i blew up my french press and i have a second degree burn with permanent scarring and a huge fucking raspberry that is going to remain with me as a mark of shame never just pack in all the grounds and try to French press that shit out because you will, you will perish, you will explode. I uh, I, I tried to make coffee like two days ago, and uh, the pressure built up from how many grounds I packed in because I like to have a shit ton of coffee. Um, well, it just like it got stuck, and you push it and you push it, and it's like it's like a coffee baby. You know, you're trying to deliver the coffee. And then uh, it just fucking exploded all over my fucking side. And uh, I, I it hurt. And I was swearing at first because of the pain. But then I was just swearing just to swear. Like, I'm mad. I'm angry that I have been burned by my failures. And it's not my fault. So when you're making coffee, use protection. Make sure you actually know what you're doing. Otherwise, you're going to be a dumbass like me. And have like this giant fucking welding mark that it just reminds you 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 need handlers, you need you need people to do things for you. So um, that happened, and uh, over the week I have been looking for a car. Um, had a couple of uh, missed opportunities or dodged bullets, however you want to say it. Um, you know, I, I got a grant and I got this kind of grant money and I wanted to get like an economy car, you know, a budget little commuter car. And, uh, my goal was to get a Honda Civic and one guy was selling it for like 3000 bucks and I talked him to 2000 bucks and then, you know, um, he flakes on me and the car already had like this, fuck you, big ass windshield crack and it didn't look very, like, good. Um, I, I kind of got a sketchy vibe from it. And then he said the title wasn't even in his name or something like that. And he had to go to the DMV. And so, like, he wouldn't have been, even be able to sell it. And it was just like, okay, I'm done. Uh, moving next. And then I went to a dealership. And I thought, like, you know, this guy has really professional-looking reviews and, uh, you know, his uh, thumbnails are all nice. The guy looks efficient. The guy looks legitimate. I thought, like, okay, I'm going to go to this dealer, you know. He's, he's like a, an LLC. He's official. And, um, you know, the car pictures look great. But when I actually look at the car, it smelled like fish. And it looked moldy everywhere. I'm like, what happened? This isn't the same car. What did you do? You're an imposter. And I'm like Spider-Man posing. And um, we take it for a test drive and the brakes felt scary. Like, I don't know if you've ever, like for anybody who's had driving experience, have you ever had a car where the gears and the brakes and the pedals all feel like they're sunken in? Because when I was driving, they felt slippery. You know, they felt like they were about to fall over and uh, really loose and just like it felt sketchy. Um, I was with a guy, uh, you know, to kind of give me some tips on like what to look for and everything. And he's like, oh, why don't you pull into a driveway and back out? And I'm not very good at backing out. And we do it anyway. And 
Let's just say I'm glad that I didn't buy it and, you know, we made it out of there alive because I wasn't insured and that would have been a nightmare if, like, I dinged some guy in a car that wasn't mine in an uninsured car. Um, but, but, today I'm looking at a Nissan, not a Honda. We're going business, bitch. We're going fucking executive fucking office desk jockey. I'm looking at a Sentra from 2003, and it's beige. You know a guy's a fucking suit when it's beige, and it's a fucking Nissan to fucking hammer it in. The only thing that could make it more business is if, it's, if it was like a Saturn or, or like a Dodge Intrapid or something like that. Um... But it, it says company car all over it, and that's literally what I got the grant for. So I'm kind of excited about like owning a business type, business looking car for business. I'm gonna like start wearing polo shirts and sunglasses and just start smoking stogies out of the window. You know what I mean? <laughs> um, if I get that car, I'm going to be doing a show. Uh, I'm not sure, uh, but it's looking like it. Um, and if that show happens, I will be in Portland. Um, details will be posted all over my media and, you know, the Facebooks, the Twitters, the YouTubes, all that shit. Uh, but, um, for now, let's just hope it fucking works. You know, I, I got money to buy and I got places to go buy. Uh, that wasn't the best line, but we're going with it. Um... And then, you know, I I wanted to just kind of kick back because I got my commissions done last week. I was really proud of the work I did for the webcomic Stringy and Moppy. And then, you know, I had all this free time. And I talked a little bit about that last week where I'm like, oh, I could, you know, kind of do whatever. And, you know, um, I, I ended up buying a Call of Duty game that everybody said sucked. I bought Call of Duty Ghosts, and, um, you know, here's my quick two-second review. It's like every other Call of Duty game, but the same. It's not bad. It's not broken. It's not a game that sucks. It's just more of the same. Like, I don't, I don't get it. Like, why, why is it that if you have a Mario game and it's the same, everybody fucking loves it or whatever... But, you know, Call of Duty, like, it's it's doing exactly what fans expected. And it's like a shitty game all of a sudden. Like, I'm playing it, and I'm like, yeah, this is this is just like every other Call of Duty game. Like, this is identical to Modern Warfare 3. So, uh, I enjoyed it. I liked it. I, I had fun with it. And, and the graphics are better. So, it's like, you know, it's more, more the same but prettier, you know? And it's bloody. There's so much blood in that game. I love it. It's like every time you shoot someone, it's like little jelly pops out of their head. It's fun. Um, so, you know, uh, and I also got Game Pass again. And uh, the reason I got it was because of uh, Record of the Lodos War got a game. And I, I really wanted to play that game. And I'm playing it. And it's good. It's really good. It's it's like Metroid, but anime. 80s anime, by the way. Um, and then uh, I have been watching stuff on Amazon. And this is something I wanted to talk about for a little bit. Because, you know, people I know, friends of mine, have always kind of been like Netflix people. And I got a little bit of uh, a, a little bit of a theory about you know Netflix, Hulu, Amazon. Um, I feel like they're all catering to different audiences. Uh, Disney Plus, another one. Um, now, if you ask me, I think that Netflix is like everyone's casual stuff. It's where all the biggest money goes, and it's where all the safest entertainment goes. It's like, that's where you get, like, everybody in the same room, and it's so vanilla, and it's so the samey shit, and they just dump everything to make, like, easily entertained, disposable media. 
and um, you know it, it's a formula. It's like McDonald's. Netflix is McDonald's. Um, there's some good stuff on Netflix, but it's all about that binge culture, you know. Like let's make something that you could just consume. And you know, I I have always kind of felt like, you know, it's like a it's like a it's like a curtain drawn over your eyes or something like that, you know, like, um, it feels like a hat trick. Uh, but then there's like, there's Hulu, right? And Hulu is like old school network cable television networks. Like you got your FX, you got your, you know, your Fox, you, you, you know, you got all those stuff, Adult Swim, Cartoon Network, Nickelodeon, I think has a channel on there, but um, basically, if you want to watch, like, your big budget television stuff, like The Simpsons and Family Guy and Adult Swim and stuff like that, you go to, you go to Hulu. Um, uh, it's not really much for, like, you know, your, like, original shows. I don't feel like there's a whole lot of Hulu shows that aren't, like, already paid for by, like, a television network themselves. So, um, you know, if you're a fan of, like, Comedy Central or FX, you want to watch Always Sunny in Philadelphia, then Hulu is definitely your, your, your spot, you know, because then you get new episodes, and it's all there in all seasons and everything, and that, that's, that's kind of what you would go there for, you know? And then, of course, like, Disney Plus is, like, your Star Wars and Marvel stuff. And, you know, your kids stuff and, you know, all the all the old Disney stuff like, you know, Disney is Disney. Like you go to Disney for Disney stuff like that's and if you like Star Wars, there's really good Star Wars stuff like they've been they have been pushing for Star Wars. Like I, I feel like they know they fucked up in the in the Ray trilogy. So they're really trying hard to win everybody back with the shows and it's honestly working because I hate Disney and I want to watch Boba Fett like really bad. And then finally, we get to my app. This is the app that I like. Uh, I like Amazon Prime Video. Um, people rap, you know, people people roast it a lot, but um, you know they roast it for things that I like it for. Like, you know, there's this bad movie called The Green Mist. And I haven't seen it, but I want to. And it was made by one guy using a bunch of stock assets and made, like, you know, a, a the, the equivalent of, like, a home movie and published it. And I'm like, that's awesome. That's great. Why, why are we roasting this? This is cool. Because, like, as an independent, that means fuck YouTube, we can make some money off this bitch, you know what I mean? <laughs> I I feel like if one guy was able to self-publish a movie, and he did it without an agent, and he got it out there, and people are watching it enough to, like, talk about it, and it's known, then, you know, good for him, you know, good for him. Uh, Amazon is really great for, like, that indie stuff. I saw this one movie called Max Reload and the Nether Blasters. And uh, this is just one movie out of like a shit ton of movies where they have like niche audiences. And this one was really catered to video game fans. Max Reload and the Nether Blasters. It was basically about a kid who worked in a video store and uh, got a Commodore, no, ColecoVision game. It, it name dropped ColecoVision, okay? There were so many references to video game culture and, like, real game culture. And it was just so nice to see a movie that, you know, was catered to the fans of its source material. Like, I don't know if you saw Wreck-It Ralph 2, but I avoided it because it wasn't about video games. Like, you made a video game franchise, and then it said, we're gonna make the Emoji Movie. Um, I'm getting sidetracked, but... Amazon has these movies that wouldn't really do well in the box office system, but are like cult classics. Uh, I decided to watch Velocipastor. 
Uh, that was a movie that I knew was going to be a bad movie, like Sharknado or something. But it was funny. It was really funny. Um, where's Velocipaster on Netflix, huh? I don't see that on Netflix. Where is it? You wouldn't find it. That's why Amazon rocks. And then, and then I watched... Um, I didn't get through the whole episode because it was kind of late, and uh, you know, I, I, I wanted to watch like you know a thirty-minute episode, so it lasted twenty minutes. And I looked at runtime, and it was like an hour, and I'm like, okay, whatever. But I saw this show from Brazil. It was an Amazon original, shot and uh, cast in Brazil called Dom, and it was twenty minutes. I watched, and those twenty minutes were hooked um it starts off at night in a club and there's just tons and tons of sex and drugs uh there's this kid who's you know like 20 and um you know he uh he he fucks this girl outside in the corner and starts doing blow right off her chest and like ODing and shit and then you cut to the father and you know that this guy knows what he's up to and wants to pull him out. So it's like this really suspenseful scene. And you feel like, you know, you don't know what's going to happen because it's in Rio de Janeiro in the down in the favela. And so it was like, you know, very, very adult gritty material and not like hand over fist. You know, it was it was done well. And you get this really nice neon lit, almost 80s retro wave vibe with like a motorcycle scene. And uh, when they finally rescue the kid, you have one of the most heartbreaking scenes I've seen in years. A father and his son uh, fighting, literally like wrestling each other because the son is an angry youth on cocaine and the dad is a heartbreaking father having to deal with the loss of his son. And I I am definitely going to watch the rest of the show because it was just, it was, it was emotional, you know? And, uh, you know, I think that's Amazon's strength. Like, when I think of Amazon shows, they're all, like, really adult and edgy and controversial. The Boys, The High Man in the Castle, um, Hunters... You know, Hannah, uh, Invincible, they're all dark. They're all, like, very edgy. And uh, compared to, like, um, Netflix shows, I mean, you know, I feel like Netflix is very mainstream. And then Amazon is, like, Sega. And then Netflix is, like, Nintendo. So, um, you know, out of all of the apps and everything, uh, yeah, I... I gotta say, I like Amazon style. Uh, it's also easier to find genre shit. If I want to find science fiction, I find fucking science fucking fiction. It's not like telling me to watch like whatever the hell the algorithm is boosting. It just gives me the full fucking list. And A to Z too. It's not like, oh, well, it's like Jurassic Park. So here's more like Jurassic Park. Just a nitpick. I mean, like, I get lost on Netflix on purpose because the UI is designed to make you just just scroll, endlessly scroll. Um, and then if you have no money, there's Pluto, to, bleh, Pluto TV, Pluto TV, which is like internet cable. I like that. It's got all the 007 movies on there. And um, there's Crackle and Tubi. Um, I, I watched 30 Days of Night, Dark Days on, t uh, Crackle, and, uh, that, that's a fun vampire movie. It's, it's a B movie, but it's pretty fun. But, um, you know, those are just kind of like my, my, like armchair philosopher kind of thoughts on streaming and stuff like that. Um, I, uh... I don't know. I, I think there are different apps for different people. It's like, it's a lot like the console wars. You know, like, with the consoles and everything, you can have different demographics. Like, Xbox is the shooters 
uh, if you if you're into shooters, you're probably going to be an Xbox guy like me, because you're filthy fucking casual and you have no soul. Or if you're a Sony guy, you're into Japanese shit. You probably have a Keyblade. You probably know every line of dialogue from Naruto and Bleach, and um, you dye your hair often. And then if you're Nintendo, you just you just like you know bright colorful stuff. Um, you you're a happy guy. You you live life to the fullest. You're a very happy person. Um, those are just like off the top of my head assumptions, but you know it's fun to make jokes. We all love jokes. So. Um, you know, that's that's kind of like what I got planned and uh, what what is on my mind. Uh, I'm hopefully gonna get that Nissan today, uh, getting it pretty soon. And um, you know, I look forward to uh, getting a car and and doing trips and going to conventions. Uh, I plan on definitely going to as many in the West Coast as I can. And, you know, it's got great mileage. It's got, it's got like, 30 miles to the gallon on road. <laughs> so, um, hope everybody is having a good Saturday. It is looking fair weather outside. It is sunny with a chance of rain. So, I will see you guys next week, and enjoy the episode. Peace.